<laughs> hey friends, today's video is going to be a little different. We're going to be talking some about power outages, fires, and a variety of topics relating to the fragility of our infrastructure. You know, when I was a lot younger, I think I was 21 or 22 years 21, of age. 21, I think, but... Mm. I worked on a fire line. It was a really bad fire. There were flames going up hundreds of feet in the air. I worked in a nominal base camp, sharpening shovels and axes and all manner of tools. It was an interesting job because I got paid... 24 hours a day the entire time I was there. But it was also terrifying because whenever the wind switched, you had to be ready to leave. It was in the middle of a large forest. Kind of like what's happening in California right now. What most people don't realize is that forest fires of a large enough size will create their own weather and an awful lot of wind. So they'll just keep on burning and going crazy. People will usually think about their own local problems when the power goes out. Right. The heat doesn't run, the lights don't work, those kinds of things. Well, if you live in the city, you still have water. Uh, you may still have heat, probably not. Mm. You definitely don't have lights. No. But there's a lot of other things that go wrong that you don't normally think about. Well, we use cell phones for a lot of our communications. In fact, we don't have any wires coming to our homestead here at all. No cable, although sometimes the cable companies call and say, hey, we're installing cable in your neighborhood this week. Can I put you down for an installation? Henry Why, has, yes, you should. <laughs> Henry has so much fun with them. I mean, it's the best spam ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, the people don't bother to look to see where we live. And the closest power line is three and a half miles from our location. And that's shared between the local church and the railroad company. The, lo the closest real power connection is 6.2 miles away. And there's no way I'm going to run 6.2 miles worth of underground cable to get power to our house seriously so we're all solar we do have an old wind generator that goes to my studio too and we actually hoped at some point to be able to put another wind generator up on top of the hill because when the sun's not shining especially in the, during storms usually the wind's blowing really good and today the wind is blowing the weather Howling. forecast weather forecast says it's blowing at 23 miles an hour sustained I'm here to tell you it's probably 30 or 35 miles an hour, so it's really, really ripping. Watching, watching grown-ups practically get knocked over is pretty exciting. 
<laughs> so there's a lot of things that don't work when the power goes out. We use cell phones for a lot of our communications. You don't think about cell phone service being disrupted, but it can be because the power goes out. Right. Some cell towers have a few hours of battery backup. Some have a couple of days worth of battery backup. But in the city or in the gentrified areas of, of a lot of the country, the battery backup is only for a few hours because the idea is that you're only going to lose power for a short while. Right, and they would be a high priority repair area because of the cell towers. But when the, when the power goes off in those areas and it's going to be off for a day or two days or more, a lot of times you lose the cell tower. Mm -hmm. And there's other pieces of the communications infrastructure that also go down. For example, we had cell service it was kind of spotty and yeah. it barely worked for Irene's business. Right. The problem was it was spotty enough that it was draining our cell phones. I actually sat there and went through every app on my phone and shut off everything so that the only thing I was running was actual cell service for the phone and cell service just for my credit card processing. I turned off all the, the normal apps that really suck juice. So, you know, in the old days with telephones, if you had a landline, if you picked up the phone, you'd hear a dial tone unless the lines were down. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't work anymore. Even if you have a landline in your home, it depends on how you're connected back to the central office. A lot of the telephone companies, whether it's uh, AT&T or Comcast or anybody else, are using fiber as part of the connection. The old phone system supplied power to your house, supplied 48 volts to the wall that your phone plugged into, and that's what allowed you to have the phone ring. Well, that doesn't work in the vast majority of the United States now. It does work in some places like Rangeley, Maine, where they have their own phone company that is still the old technology, but it doesn't work in Ash Fork, Arizona, or Phoenix, Arizona, or in Taft, California, where we were a few weeks ago. So you pick up the phone and it doesn't work. Well, what are you going to do then? If you have cell service, that will work. Electricity is an amazingly fragile piece of infrastructure in the U.S. You know, I listened to an interview with the governor of the state of California yesterday. And in that interview, he said that PG&E had failed to update their transmission lines for more than 20 years. Mm -hmm. So what's happened is that people use more and more electricity. They demand more and more power. And when that happens, the demand on the lines increases. Well. When you increase the demand on the lines and you don't make the lines any bigger or you don't change the voltage level going over the lines, the amperage goes up. When the amperage goes up, the wire heats up. When the wire heats up, it eventually fails. And when it fails along these rural transmission lines, it sparks mm -hmm. and the lines hit the ground and you start a fire. Well, we had uh, Laura, one of our friends in California, um, in her neighborhood, the transmission lines actually are not up against the, ro the regular roads. They're actually between the rows of houses. So you have your backyard, and then there's a transmission line that's right on your back um, property line. And then on the other side of that, there's another house, and that's their backyard. Three or four years ago, the lines caught on fire between the houses in the back. I mean, the whole line burned, and they were able to shut it off. It didn't do really that much damage, but it took quite a while, I want to say a week or two, for them to get power back because the tele the lines were gone and it took the telephone lines with them because it just burned up everything on the poles. They actually had to replace some of the poles. Yeah. So, you know, the thing is, when you look at, at being prepared, and this is really about emergency preparation, we'll follow this up with another video later this week that talks about things you can do when the electricity goes out to keep your house safe, keep your food safe, stay warm, and do all the things that you do in a normal living situation. 
But today, what we want to do is really bring attention to the fact that so much of the infrastructure that you live with relies heavily on the electric grid. No matter what you do, if the electric grid goes down, there is major portions of what you rely on every single day that aren't going to work. Telephones. They used to work even if you picked up the phone and the power was out because the phone company supplied electricity to make your phone work. The worst of all is if you have an electric range to oh, cook, yeah. you're out of luck. Yeah, SOL. So, <laughs> so there's a lot of things that you can do to prepare, and we'll talk about those in an upcoming video. Even though I have a lot of knowledge about how these pieces of infrastructure work, it was kind of a wake-up call about how bad it can actually get when the power goes out in a major way. Well, out here, we don't even notice when the power goes out because we're not attached to it. Um, when we were at the event, if the power had gone out completely in our area, okay, we'd have lost all the street lights. But I was talking to one of the other merchants and I said, well, geez, I hope it doesn't go out. Oh, well, she's, she's like, we're camping. It's no big deal. I'm like, yeah, cell service. If the cell phones are down, we can't process credit cards. Yeah. And although there's a way to process credit cards offline, what you're doing is you're trusting those people that they have, that, that doesn't actually check to see whether their credit card's any good. And then later you have to actually send it through when you've got connectivity, which means you can get, I think the nice word is shafted, by a potential customer. Because <laughs> you don't know everybody that comes into your shop. You know, so it's a big, oh, heh, minor detail, no gasoline, no diesel fuel, because 99% of the gas stations do not have backup generators. Yeah, there's some simple things that we do as a normal course of our life here in rural America. For example, we try to keep all of our vehicles with at least a half tank of fuel in them for a lot of reasons. One of which is if the power goes out and we don't know about it because we make our own electricity, but if the power goes out in town and the gas station can't pump gas because they don't have a backup generator, I can get someplace where there is fuel if I need to go someplace. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of little things like that that you can do. It's not a big deal. doesn't cost you any more money. It just takes some thought and some preparation. Well, I hope this was of interest to you. I hope it brings some more awareness to how interconnected and how fragile our infrastructure really is in our everyday life in the United States. Well, we hope you found this informative, interesting, thought-provoking today. Everybody needs to be responsible for their own safety. And one of the biggest things about being responsible is thinking about it ahead of time. So if you liked what you saw today, be sure to hit that like button. And if you think you might want to watch something crazy like this again, subscribe and hit that bell button for notifications because we're going to be doing a bunch more videos like this in the next week or two. Uh, it's super important that people be aware of what's going on no matter where they live in the United States. Every place you live, there are issues. Yeah. And it's not, it's not anybody's fault. It's, it's the weather. It's the, our weather is becoming more violent. Uh, some of our infrastructure is decaying and stuff happens. So, see you next time. Bye. Yeah, for those of you, for those of you, <laughs> that, 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 you washed your tongue and you can't do a thing with it, right? Yeah, with my hair too. Yeah, well, the wind did that this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do a different ending? Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs>